Hi YouTube, my name is Cassandra Alger. I am 28 years old and I am a proud single mom of a beautiful little girl named Mackenzie and she had just turned 7 years old December of 2018. video is going to be about what it's like to live with a child with autism along with her having kidney problems. So let's jump into this video, why won't we? Life as a mother has blessed my life so far and continues to bless me with this beautiful little girl. Um, the first topic I would like to talk about is the time that she was actually diagnosed with the autism. Mackenzie was always a happy baby and a happily toddler and still up until now is still a very happy little girl. However, there was things that she was not doing. Um, by the time that she was four months old to six months old, she would have a serious face on when someone was trying to pl play with her or a family member was trying to talk to her. Um, she was actually like made it look like she was just studying someone and just didn't have much face expressions. Some more examples that um, she was not doing examples, she was not talking, it was very delayed. When it came to her walking, she didn't start walking until closer to a year and a half, or at least starting to try. When it came to little things like her holding her bottle and using her utensils, it was closer to six to seven months old when she would start trying to grasp that, that for her. But at these times, I was actually, didn't really think much of it. I was like, okay, well, she'll actually learn these things in her own time and in time as well. So I just didn't really think much of it because me, myself as well, I'm a very soul learner. I learn better when I'm hands-on. So I thought it was basically the same thing for her. So... Along with that, I would take her to the family doctor and he would for an annual checkup from like the two months, four months, and six months, and he would get the milestone book and start asking me questions to see if she was actually hitting her milestones. Now, going down the track list, um, a lot of those milestones she was not doing, so he was starting to have a concern to it. So he was really concerned about it, my family doctor, so he referred me to a doctor who was more experienced into the department where children are delayed with speech and those fine motor skills that a normal child would be doing. So a few months later down the, down the line, um, I went to this doctor where I was referred to. Um, and he started doing this screening of for my daughter. So he started thinking that she, and suspecting that she had autism and knowing me that I wanted a second opinion so I was referred to a third doctor to get a confirmation to make sure that this is what it was. But leading up to this and waiting to see this doctor prior to this, my family also started suspecting that she would have autism as well. So with that being said, I didn't really think much of it, but I actually used to brush it off and tell them that basically be quiet and she'll learn on her own terms and in time she will learn, but she's just doing it on her own terms. So I was waiting upon these, re these results the results finally came in. It was actually confirmed that she was actually on the autism spectrum. Now, finding out these results, I was actually very sad and had guilt because me, I was blaming myself because I thought I did something wrong throughout my pregnancy. But I actually got it together and I pulled my actions, put my actions to work and got into the mama mode and do whatever I was supposed to do and continue to do now what I'm supposed to do for her to help her in the best way I can. The actions I actually did to actually help her was I went through multiple classes to learn more about the autism spectrum. I got jumped on the wait list for her to have therapies. Even, even now I put her into piano lessons because I heard that piano lessons are very great for children with autism because as we all know kids with autism sometimes have a very high energy and 
it's very hard for them to calm down, especially sometimes when they have a high expectancy of high stimulation, which can be very hard for them. And all I really want to do is protect her and do the best I can so she has a better quality life later. Some struggles that my daughter has on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, when it comes to the outside, um, she, the outside, she doesn't understand the concept of danger. So she has a tendency to basically dart out in the middle of the road, so which contains, until she understands, she needs a harness to keep her safe. Um, another one is, is that um, when it comes to the buses, she has a hard time on buses because sometimes she gets overstimulated. She has a timing where she can actually hug and kiss people, which is not very good because not a lot of people are friendly. Um, another one is when she travels the bus on the, the school bus, she needs a harness because she has tendencies to walk around. So... With that being said, those are some struggles. Um, another struggle that she has is in the malls. Um, because there's so many people, she has a hard time grasping that and sometimes has a hard time with that as well. So she has a meltdown in the middle of the store at times. Another struggle that I actually ha um, forgot to mention that my daughter has is that when she hears sudden loud noises, it's very too much for her. and it actually scares her. So when she hears an over loud of music example, sometimes those are too sharp for her ears and it's too hard for her. So she has a meltdown with that as well. When it comes to sirens on the bus, like sirens when the, the ambulance or fire trucks, sometimes that's too loud for her as well and she, her ears are very sensitive in that sense. So it's basically just a sensory overload at times. There is a lot more struggles that she has, but those are just a little bit of struggles that she has on the day-to-day -day basis that I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, please. But over, overall, she is an amazing little girl. She continues to stride for the best, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys as my first topic. The second topic that I would like to talk to you about is when she was diagnosed with the nephrotic syndrome. Mackenzie was diagnosed with the nephrotic syndrome five months after she was diagnosed with the autism. She was diagnosed on um, the week, week leading up to Thanksgiving weekend of 2013 in October. This particular week leading up to Thanksgiving weekend, Mackenzie was actually sick with the common cold. Well, at least what I thought was a common cold um, for a while. Um, she would actually have a high fever and I would help her break it, but then a few hours later leading up to the high fever again. So with that being said, that was pretty scary, but I still continue doing the home remedies to try to break the cold. No matter what I did, this cold just kept holding on dear life, so I didn't know what to do so I got scared so and took her to the family doctor to get her assessed and to get help that she needed but I started to notice that she was swelling up more and I still was kind of was still continuing to be concerned so two days later after the Thanksgiving weekend I took her back to my family doctor to have him look at take another look at her. When he took another look at her, he was actually brought some concerns and was very concerned about it. So with that being said, he looked at her and said, well, this is actually edema, and which means that edema is fluid on the legs and sometimes the whole body. Also, leading up to before I brought her back to the doctors, at this particular time, she was actually still in diapers. So having... That being said, she was actually having going from 10 diapers down to only basically one diaper a day. So that was actually a lot more concerning to, to that. So fast forward back to it now, two days after, I did bring her to my family doctor, and he re-looked at her and said that this edema, this is edema. And usually for a lot of people, edema is normally for 
people that are very, like, are in the older crowd, basically. So he told me to get her to sick kids because this looks like a sign of kidney problems. Now, knowing me, I'm a mom, and all I want to do is protect her and do what's right for her. So I was scared, and I had a breakdown. Like, I bawled like a baby. My daughter showed me that she's stronger than me. So I did what the doctor has said. Right from the family doctor's office, I went straight to Sick Kids Hospital so she can get further treatment. Um, to get the further treatment, they had to take a urine sample and blood work and get it tested to find out what was going on. So I waited in Six Kids Hospital for eight hours and finally they had the results. So while I was waiting, I seen the doctors come to my room where Mackenzie was with the kidney doctor and they had explained to me that my daughter was diagnosed with kidney problems. Now, it's they were telling me that oh, yeah, kidney yeah. problems is very common for children at her age at this particular time. This particular kidney problem that she was diagnosed with is called nephrotic syndrome. So now I'm going to do the best I can to actually explain to my knowledge of what I did my research on this nephrotic syndrome because I'm one of those people when it's a new disease within my family, I do everything I have to try to understand it and learn more about it. Nephrotic syndrome is a type of kidney disease that is very common, but not common enough to in most children. Um, it is common enough that they need a special doctor to treat these, this kidney disease. This kidney disease is usually diagnosed in the middle of a flare-up. Some of the symptoms are, um, some of the symptoms are, is flu-like symptoms. Another symptom is, is when edema starts setting in the legs and the body. Another symptom to this kidney problem is when the child or particular patient is having hard times going pee, which means is that the edema actually starts setting in in this particular time. Edema is a type of fluid in the legs and sometimes the full body, and usually that's very hard to see. And Edema is when you press on a per certain part of the body and it doesn't flash back normally. And that's what happened to my daughter. To test when they have a flare-up or a type the, this type of kidney disease, they, in the hospital, they take a urine sample along with a blood sample to test out if they have like this type of kidney disease. Now, the type of kidney disease for this is that when the results come back, and they say that there's a high protein in the system and albumin is low, 95% of the chance that is a flare-up and needs more further treatment. To treat this kidney disease, um, to help the kidneys, it doesn't necessarily mean that the kidneys are not working properly, it just means that the kidneys just need a little bit more help because they're being overworked, especially when they're trying to fight off of infection or some type of cold that they can't shake off. Now the type of treatment that they use is a steroid called prednisone. And the prednisone helps the kidneys get a little help. Now for the edema that's actually being helped out as well, um, they use a pee medicine. I'm not too sure what the pee medicine is called, but I just call it the pee medicine. Um, it actually helps eliminate some of the fluid from the body. That way she can be a little bit more comfortable. Now, also they sometimes use what's called albumin dip, which is sometimes is a, basically a blood transfusion. And usually with these things, it actually usually helps the patient to get more help to go into remission, that's what they call it, so that she can be better. Now, some kids that are diagnosed with this can be anywhere from four months to six months and who are born with it. In my daughter's case, she was actually diagnosed when she was closer to three years old. Now, since this, like, from her being diagnosed, she had six flare-ups where we actually had to spend a lot of time at sick kids. Now that she's actually a little bit older, every single time that she has 
a common cold or a cold that lasts a very long time, I start getting really nervous thinking that it could be potentially that her kidneys are, might be affected. So when she does those things with the autism part of kissing people, I get really nervous because I don't know if that other person is um, had sick of with a virus or thing that could be passed down because now my daughter has this kidney problem, her and over time, her immune system is very low, so she's very easy to get sick at this point. And me as a mom, when she is sick, we all, all parents don't like seeing our kids sick. So, and all we do want to do is protect them and take the pain away when they are sick. But overall, with all that being said, Mackenzie is a very strong little girl, still a very happy girl, very active, and she showed me that she's very strong and amazing, and I'm so blessed to be, to have such an amazing little girl, and me, myself, I've always wanted a family, and I got to start my family with her, so I'm actually very happy to say that, and filled with joy. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching my story and getting a little taste of what it's like to live with a child with autism and living with her having kidney problems as well. Leave any questions and comments down below and please subscribe. Until the next video, ciao for now.